Jack FM's Greg Burke in Afghanistan in association with Sabre, supporting Britain's reservists and employers. Camp Bastion is the biggest military base to be built by the British since the Second World War. It sits in the middle of the southern Afghan desert. Before Bastion, there was nothing here, just miles and miles of desert for as far as the eye could see. It's home to anywhere between two and 3,000 troops at any time, most of them British. For many, it's a resting point before heading out to any one of the much more basic forward operating bases, or FOBs. But for others, it's where they call home for their entire six-month tour. During my time here, Lieutenant John Dolphin from the Seven Rifles Regiment would be my guide. We started off by taking a look at where the guys and girls slept before we saw the cookhouse, welfare office and even the laundrette. This is um, Slonky Limes, which is basically where we, we live. And um, essentially what we've got is a, is a tented accommodation, um, big sort of ten-man tents where uh, everyone sort of sleeps on, on camp beds. All tents are heated, all thermally sort of insulated for the winter and uh, the heating system doubles as a, a cooling system as well, so it keeps you uh, nice and cool in the, in the summer as well. It's a um, good laugh, and that's probably the, well, comparatively to back home, it's uh, pretty uncomfortable conditions, but everyone has a good laugh together. That's what gets you, you through a lot of it. We're currently feeding about 2,100 people at the moment. Uh, we've got 54 chefs, and we're also providing chefs to outstations, sort of lads on the ground feeding those as well. Uh, chefs are working 24 hours a day at the moment, broke down into shifts, Obviously the three meals a day, plus they're responsible for obviously prepping up the meals for the next day as well. We're roughly going through about 300 sort of big catering size tins of beans every week. So we roughly spend about 25 30,000 pounds a week just on rations, sort of just for here. And then we get rations in as well for other stations. So we probably spend about 50,000 pounds a week just on food. That's not including water and everything else that we have to do as well. Sort of food saying that nobody really worries about until something's not there or something. But obviously if you've got good food then it's just you know it's good for especially now the weather's turned bad, it's got very cold, very wet. So come through again a hot meal, you know, three times a day, it's definitely a boost from our for them. I suppose you've got to cater for different tastes but also different religions as well, haven't you? Obviously the way the British Army's going, we are very diverse now. So we've got a lot of Gurkhas and people from Commonwealth countries as well. So hence why on a Sunday night we have a roast bar for you know those people like the traditional, but we also have a curry bar one as well, where we do try and cater for everyone that we can. What we try and do is try and emulate what we do in the UK, just sort of out to here, so they don't see a big difference no matter where they are. So yeah, the sound of army food is the same whether it's in the UK or whether it's on operations. You know, we still do the traditional fish and chips, curries, all the sticky buns and cakes that everybody, everybody seems to like. Jack FM's Greg Burke in Afghanistan. So we're at Camp Bastion, sat outside a pizza hut, believe it or not. There were soldiers sat around enjoying a slice of Hawaiian meat feast, uh, all for $18. Uh, there's a naffy here as well, which is what looks like a theme bar, but with absolutely no booze behind the bar. And we're here with uh, John and Tim and Andrea uh, who have been showing us around Camp Bastion and they tell us that tomorrow we're going to be heading out on patrol with the guys and then in a couple of days time we're going to be heading up to uh, Musakala and uh, John tells us that he, uh, he reckons he's lost three of his nine lives so far up there so starting to feel a little bit nervous which I haven't been up until now but um, yeah uh, Oh, no, I haven't seen it. Oh, no, I haven't seen it. That's good. Um, so, Andrew, what, what tent's this and what happens in here? This is the J1 welfare tent, and as you can see, we're now looking through some DVDs. Uh, it's a stormy afternoon. No, this is for later on, when we're not as busy um, this evening. Um, so we're going to take a DVD out for us all to watch. We've obviously got the news in the corner and some books um, there that people can come and just take. Um, some newspapers, a little outdated. And here you've got the admin office. Um, you've got people from different units. And mainly this is m main point of call, you know, regards to pay. Uh, whether it be pay issues or claims, that kind of nature, you can come in here. You can also cash checks uh, with a good rate uh, at the moment, about uh, two to the pound, um, to come in here and get your cash, which then you can go and spend at your pizza hut. And a lot of it, it's next of kin is quite a big one here, obviously with casualties, uh, emergency contacts, um, also, also for compassionate cases. Uh, say someone back home uh, is ill, 
so we can get in touch and that will come through the system here in the J1 tent. Man 24 hours a day, obviously busier during the day for various uh, services that they provide. So this is the laundrette, I, I take it. That's it, thank you very much. Yep, sure. Is it a good service? Does it always come out? Uh, this, is the, this is the best laundry. Best laundry in, in town? 252. 252? Two. Two, two. Yeah, come out from Sri Lanka. How long have you been working the laundry here? Well, only 20 days. 20 days? Yes, yeah. yeah. And already we've seen a marked improvement. Really? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the talk around the camp is, is only of how, of how good 252's laundry is. How, how do you find living on the camp? It's very nice, sir. I love this. People are happy. Our foods are good. Our bosses are looking after well. I'm really happy. You've come from Sri Lanka? Yeah, I come from, came from Sri Lanka. And you, your family are there? Are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when do you expect to be heading back to Sri Lanka? After six months. I'm, I'm my vacation on the 8th of July. My birthday is on 9th. I will arrive on 9th. <laughs> so you'll be having a party on the 9th? <laughs> yes. So I will have my birthday party in the next day. In the, uh, uh, I will arrive about 12 o'clock like that. I will have my lunch. And I will, about 3 o'clock, I will cut my cake. <laughs> and is that is the your first time in Afghanistan? Uh, this is the first time. Sir. Before I worked in Saudi Arabia, British Air, in the air base. And always laundry? Not laundry, sir. I worked in the supermarket before. And before I worked uh, all in supermarket and catering. Nice to meet you. We are Sri Lanka. We always beat in, uh, England cricket team. <laughs> <laughs> I love rugby. John Wilkinson, too. And we love Diana. We, we love Diana, we Sri Lankans. Love. We love to. We all love Diana. Well, listen, <laughs> thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you very it's much. For which, uh, it's for a radio station uh, in England called Jack oh, yes. FM. Yes, but you'll have to listen out on the, on the internet. Thank you. Fantastic. Lovely to meet you. Take care. Jack FM's Greg Burke in Afghanistan in association with Sabre. To find out more about employing members of the reserve forces, log on to www.sabre.mod.uk.